Hello guys, my name is Mitch Romzhensky. I continue to publish videos from my upcoming course about GraphQL engine called Hasura and in today's video you will see how to build relations between two tables and how to add new item and how to update new items using mutations. So let's get started and enjoy watching. Hi, welcome to this lesson. Until now we had only one table called photos. But if you have ever seen before any demo about GraphQL, you most probably saw a use case where you are fetching also some nested data, like author information, comments or something else. So let's implement such a relation in this video as well. First of all, I will go to the data page and create a new table called comments. I add and fill the required fields out. I will add ID field. Then we need the comment row, which is a text type. Then I need field, which will be a reference to our photo. So I will call it photo ID. And keep in mind that the type of this field should be the same as the type of ID in photo table. In our case, it is UID and default field we will leave empty. After this, I will just add created add field. Then I have to do one thing I didn't do before. In foreign key section, I have to set our photo ID as a foreign key for our table photos and then I create a relation to column ID. So this way I set up the relation between these two tables. Now we have two tables which have a relation, but this relation exists only on database level, which means that if we go to graphical, we still cannot fetch comments for our photos. However, we can fetch comments separately. In order to be able to fetch comments for every photo, we need to ask Hasura to expose this relation. We have to go back to data, then to our photos table and then navigate to tab called relationship. You can see that Hasura suggests already a relation, so we just need to click add button. Here you have an option to rename your relation, but the current one is ok for me, so I just click save. Cool, now I can go back to graphical and now I see also a field comments and I can fetch also comments for every photo. We see that now we have a property comments, which is an empty array for now. So let's add some data to the comments table. I will copy ID of the first photo and go back to data, then I find comments table, then go inside insert row tab and add couple of comments to the first photo. Now if we run our query one more time, we can see that we have got two comments for our first photo. By the way, keep in mind that all filter sorting and searching features are also applicable to nested queries. So I can easily say that I want to get only the first comment for each photo as example. And since we have some relations, we can have a look at the tool called Voyager. If I click on it, we can see our visualized graph and we can trace how your entities relate to each other, which might be very useful in some cases. Then I remember we didn't see the feature called Analyze, so let's have a look at it. I click it here and I can see which SQL query is being executed for this particular query, which can give you some better understanding of what happens under the hood, if you are proficient enough in pure SQL scripting, of course. Alright, that's it regarding relations. I hope it was interesting and see you in the next video.
Welcome guys. We have learned a lot about querying. We saw relations, filtering, sorting and pagination. But until now we have been adding data directly into the database manually, which is not an option for modern application. We have to learn how to do it via GraphQL interface as well. For this we will be using mutations. In GraphQL, mutations are responsible for manipulating with data, like adding data, removing or updating. And of course, in Hasura it comes out of the box. So how we can create a mutation? In left bottom corner, we have a drop down where we can select mutation and click plus button. We see that dummy mutation was added. So let's rename it into insert photo first. In Explorer, Hasura provides us a couple of insert mutation. Insert photos one for creating a single photo or insert photos for bulk or multiple insert. I will use insert photos one for now. I expand it and check fields I want to insert. It is photo URL and description, so let's add values for these fields. So we see the error which says that we must to have selection of subfields. So let's do it. I want to select back ID, photo URL, description and created add field of the inserted photo. Ok, the error is gone, now let's try to execute this mutation. Great, our new photo was created, so if we execute previous query, we will see that the new photo is also included to the result. Alright, let's copy the ID of this new photo and go back to mutation. We know that our IDs have to be unique. But what happens in case if I try to insert photo with ID which is already exists? I will slightly change the field values and let's try it out. So we get an error which is expected. But what if I would like to avoid such behavior and implement behavior called absurd, which means update record if it exists or otherwise just insert it. Fortunately, we can do it and in order to achieve this we need to configure field called onConflict. First, we need to pick which constraint do we handle, in our case it is a primary key violation, and then we can pick which field we should update in this case. We can pick photo URL. But the truth is that Hasura supports here not only single field but array of fields. So we can add also description or if you want to update nothing you can leave just empty array. But I will revert it and let's try to execute it. Now we see that it works fine. If we query photos one more time, we see that a new photo was not created, but Hasura just updated an existing one. Now let's go back to our mutation and I will tell just few words about insert photos. I will collapse insert photos one and expand insert photos. I will add the new photo and add some values and of course I define returning values. Unlike insert photos one, you can also get amount of affected rows, so let's check it. If we run this statement we will get pretty much the same result as for insert photos one. So there will be added a new photo, the only return type will be different, do you see? Our returning type is always array, even if we insert only one item. And also it shows the count of affected rows. It can give us a hint that this mutation is being used for bulk insert, which means insert of multiple values at one time. And it is true. The only thing we have to change in order to insert multiple values is to turn object into array and add multiple of values. 
Then I just change descriptions and URLs and run it. Okay, looks good. So let's try to query all photos and here is our new photos. So let's move forward and in next video we will see how to update photos. See you there. Hello guys. In this short lesson we will see how we can update items in Hasura. Updating of items is very similar to insert mutation. So there are two options, update by primary key and bulk update. Let's start with update by primary key. I will copy an ID of this last photo, remove everything and add a mutation update photos by primary key. There is one required field where I have to insert ID of the photo I gonna update. Then I have to expand underscore set property and select fields you want to update. In my case I choose description, but of course you can pick multiple of them. After this I have to define some fields to return. I want to have ID and let's say description. Now I run it and I can see that my photo description was successfully updated. But what about bulk update? With bulk update it is pretty much similar. You have to use update photos mutation. Here in underscore set you define which fields to update. In my case it will be again description. And uh, let's say I want to change description to marked for delete. Then inside where field, which is required, we have to define which exactly photos should be updated. I want to update all items which were created after, uh, let's say, our cloned photo, which we created earlier in this section. Let's go in data and check when it was created. Mm -hmm. And now go back and pass this value. Then the last step is to define return values. I would like to see IDs and descriptions and affected rows also would be cool to have. I click run and we see that photos created after third one have got a description marked for delete. Cool, updating is working so let's see how to delete items in the next lesson. So see you there.